Hello friends, uh, hope you are all okay, you are all enjoying your life and also enjoying practicing ultrasound. I am welcoming you in my ultrasound teaching videos. As you all know, I am Dr. Arshad Nadeem Awan and these days I have started the gynae unit. The first chapter in the gynae unit is related to uterus. I have discussed quite a lot abnormalities related to uterus including leomyoma, fibroids, leomyosarcoma, endometrial thickening, endometrial abnormalities and a lot more. Today my topic of discussion is cervical abnormalities. Cervical abnormalities, you may come across certain abnormalities and pathologies while you are scanning. The first important is whenever there is supra cervical hysterectomy, so the remaining part of the cervix will mimic as a fibroid. So be careful while you are scanning and patients give you the history of supra cervical hysterectomy. So you should not confuse that would be cervical remnant. Just take the measurement mention on the report that uh, uh, a patient has an hysterectomy and cervical remnant is or cervical remnants are measuring blah 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 whatever the measurements are so must mention that on the report. The second very common pathology related to cervix is cervical polyps. Cervical polyps are uh, very difficult to distinguish unless these are very small very large or unless it is uh, surrounded by a small fluid. If there is around fluid, so you can easily pick the uh, cervical polyps. Otherwise, it becomes difficult to uh, find out or diagnose cervical polyps on the ultrasound imaging. The third, uh, uh, the third abnormality is endometrial polyp or uh, intracavitary leomyoma sometime may prolapse into the cervical canal and it will mimic as a cervical pathology but in fact this would be endometrial or uh, this would be intracavitary fibroids which will uh, mimic as a cervical lesion you must be careful whether this is cervical abnormality or this is related to any myometrial or endometrial abnormality beside this cervical cancer uh, is very common for the cervical cancer, there is no particular uh, investigation is required because clinically it could be easily diagnosed. But if in case undiagnosed case you are you are scanning, you may come across with a heterogeneously heterogeneous uh, heterogeneous uh, solid mass. So if it is heterogeneous solid mass in the cervical region, it will be cancer. Beside that. Uh, if you put the Doppler signal uh, signals on it, so it will show the vascularity. So these are the abnormalities which you can easily pick on the ultrasound imaging. Adenoma magnum, it is also called as minimal deviation adenocarcinoma. It is very rare type of malignancy of the cervix and it is usually seen in those who are already suffering from pure Jigar syndrome. Pure Jigar syndrome is a syndrome in which there are multiple hematomatous polyps occurs uh, within the gastrointestinal tract. If the patient is suffering from this pure Jigar syndrome, so uh, you uh, may come across cervical carcinoma this real carcinoma rare carcinoma which is called as minimal deviation adenocarcinoma in this carcinoma patient will uh, complain about the watery discharge from the vagina and all the ultrasound imaging you will see multiple loculated cystic lesion within the cervical region one thing uh, worth mentioning here in the cervical region you can see uh, multiple nebothian cyst which uh, are, happens to be normal nebothian cysts are very normal finding you may come across nebothian cysts every now and then but in that condition if multiple nebothian cysts appears you may confuse with this uh, sort of a rare uh, carcinoma so make sure that you are looking for the nebothian cyst yes if there is cystic lesion and within the cystic lesion there is solid components so you may think about this rare cancer this uh, uh, minimal invasive adenocarcinoma or sometime there will be a solid component so this is another uh, specific type of a cancer which you can uh, see on the ultrasound imaging and you may come across uh, this cancer while scanning the cervical part 
how all these pathologies will appear on the ultrasound imaging, how you will uh, look that uh, this is supra cervical hysterectomy remnant of the cervical uh, tissues, or these are polyps, or these are uh, you can call it a prolapse polyps uh, from the endometrium or prolapse fibroid from the uh, myometrial region. Uh, this is what I have discussed about you, a rare adenocarcinoma adenocar or a true carcinoma of the cervix. So this will all be clarified on these uh, following images. So let's start watching imaging and I'm sure this will enhance your knowledge. On this transvaginal ultrasound imaging, you can appreciate well-defined cervix. Cervix is clearly visible. Super cervical area has been removed because it was supra cervical hysterectomy. So in supra cervical hysterectomy, part of the cervix will still be there. That would be considered as a either full cervix or sometime cervical remnants. Both you can write on your report that cervical remnants, measuring blah, 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 uh, is, can be seen uh, in the pelvic region on the transvaginal scan. Many a time clinician confuse this with a mass. So therefore, you should have to have a complete history available, whether the patient has been through a radical uh, hysterectomy or this was total hysterectomy. In short, it would be called as a total hysterectomy in which entire uterus would have been removed but in case of supra cervical hysterectomy there will be uh, cervical components left so you should not confuse with the cervical component you should not confuse with the mass this would not be a mass this would be a cervical remnant so on the report mention that part of the cervix part of the uterus has been removed due to supra cervical hysterectomy status the cervical remnants myring blah 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 is seen in the pelvic region so that is that would be your report on this ultrasound image it is also transvaginal scan and on tvs you can clearly see the cervical areas in the cervical area here two ecogenic lesions can be seen in the cervical canal uh, both are indicated by white arrow here uh, these are cervical polyps. So polyps may occur in the cervical region as well. Sometimes it happens to be small. Sometimes it's become enlarged enough to uh, protrude out of the uh, external os. It likely to happen. But in that case, these are still uh, within the cervical canal. So these both are classical example of cervical polyps. Cervical polyps usually appear in round shape. It usually appear in ecogenic form. Very rarely it will appear hypoequic. But uh, normally so far the cervical polyps are concerned. It will appear in an ecogenic form. So carefully analyze the uh, cervical part as well. We, because most of the time uh, we investigate the patient for the uterine and the endometrial abnormality but we do not focus on the cervical region so this is what how the cervical polyps will look and will appear on the ultrasound imaging on the ultrasound report mention that two or uh, one or whatever the uh, number of the polyps are uh, ecogenic uh, lesions can be seen in the uterine uh, in, the, in the cervical canal most likely polyps this is another transvaginal scan. On this transvaginal scan, cervix is focused. Within the cervix, these two white arrows indicating polyps which is prolapsing from the endometrial cavity into the cervical canal. Although it is very difficult to appreciate on this image because I need to have the cursor to just show it to you. But uh, it's good that we have these white arrows. These both white arrows from top and the bottom it's indicating these small polyps if you go along with all these things you will be able to see that it's continuously going upward because it's all the way coming from the endometrium down to the cervical canal so this is what prolapsing polyps so prolapsing polyps are also very common you should not confuse with that because if you follow the course 
you will be able to see that some of the abnormal striations coming down from the intermedial canal to the cervical canal and this way it it uh, it would be a polyp so polyp sometime may be within the, confined within the cervical canal but sometime it may prolapse from the endometrial cavity because endometrium is very common uh, area for the development of the polyps and uh, a polyp may be single or polyp may be multiple or may be small or may be large but if it is large enough it's likely to expel downward prolapse into the cervical canal here on this ultrasound image again uh, it is a very confusing image and uh, you cannot easily get your head around it uh, how to appreciate this prolapse polyps but as if you follow the course of this vascularity on the doppler it is showing that this polyp has increased vascularity uh, sometime there will be hypervascular polyps uh, which is uh, very important to note down and, and therefore we use the doppler signals on on this transvaginal scan again the polyps can be seen and if you follow the course of this polyp this is coming all the way down from the endometrial canal and protruding into the cervical canal uh, so if in if in if you see the case for the first time although it will be difficult for you but gradually gradually if you if once you uh, if you want to see all these images uh, you will be able to recognize all uh, these type of uh, prolapsing polyps in the future so th that's why these import these images play a very vital role so keep watching all these videos keep watching all these images and get your eyes familiarized with the images that how prolapsing polyps looks like on the ultrasound imaging uh, this is an a, another important slide and again it is transvaginal scan and on transvaginal scan this m is specially marked as a mass so if you see uh, superior to this mass slight area of the cervix can be seen with cervical canal as well but at the end of the cervix i would say that the distant part of the cervix near to the external os this mass is developing as this is transvaginal scan so therefore you can see in the broad view in the in the wider view so that's why it's very clear to you this is an heterogeneous mass this is uh, arising from the cervical area and because of its heterogeneity because of its peculiar outer shape this is directly confirmed as a cervical carcinoma because cervical carcinoma rarely needs investigation because clinically uh, it has its own particular symptoms on uh, pervaginal scan with the speculum you can identify this cervical cancer quite easily but again if in case the patient is not previously diagnosed and it is on your table for the ultrasound imaging and you are scanning the patient uh, either transvaginal or transabdominal you might uh, see cervical cancer so cervical cancer will appear in this form uh, although many a patient will uh, many a clinician will confuse this with uh, fibroid but be sure that this would be a leomyosarcoma or cervical cancer as i mentioned earlier that there is a particular and special type of cancer very rare cancer which is called as adenoma malignum uh, or it is also called as a deviated adenocarcinoma the characteristic of this adenoma malignum is it appears as a cystic mass many a time and in the cervix you uh, might have noted that there may be multiple of cystic lesions which are called as nebothian cysts so uh, cervical area is very common for the nebothian cyst so you may confuse with either it is a nebothian cysts or these are adenoma malignum so the one distinguishing feature is whenever within the cystic lesion there is solid component uh, so you should always think for adenoma malignum uh, so be careful that you have to classify both nebothian cyst and adenoma malignum in the adenoma malignum if it is cystic so there will be solid component within the cysts here is another example of the adenoma malignum on the transabdominal scan look at on the transabdominal scan you can 
detect the small cystic lesion in the cervical area and on this uh, image many clinician will consider it as an ebothian cyst they will measure the cystic lesion and they will write on their report that the nebothian cyst measuring that that can be seen but that would not be true whenever there is nebothian cyst classify it carefully analyze it carefully do the transvaginal scan if the patient is complaining of watery discharge or some other symptoms which are related to the cervical cancer so go for the transvaginal scan and look inside all these nebothian cysts which is uh look like a nebothian cyst as i mentioned if within this nebothian cyst there is any soft tissue components or there is any other uh soft tissues area or nodularity so consider it as an adenoma malignant mark on your report mention clearly and when you are writing a uh, nebothian cyst as well mention that inside there is no intralesional uh, soft tissue components seen Yes friend uh, this was all about the cervical abnormalities we have shortly uh, discussed about the cervical abnormality and how it will appear on the ultrasound imaging how you will appreciate uh, supra cervical uh, uh, hysterectomy uh, remnants of the cervix how you will distinguish uh, between the endometrial polyps and the cervical polyps uh, how it will appear on the ultrasound imaging what are the distinguishing features of the cervical carcinoma how you will look for the minimal invasive adenocarcinoma this all has been already discussed so uh, i'm sure uh, you will get uh, guidance from all these images if you come across any abnormalities you feel that it's worth discussing you just drop me a note i will get back to you uh, take great care of yourself keep practicing ultrasound keep watching my videos keep sharing with others so we'll see each other uh, with the next topic till then take great care of yourself bye bye